I worked for a company for about 10 years, uh, so up to the age of 25, I think I were, and then I, I decided to go self-employed. The downside was that six months after that, I lost my arm in a bad accident. And this particular farm that we were actually contracting at was well renowned for being wet on the soil. Um, so basically we started having problems with the uh, forage harvester then, i.e. blocking up with soil and grass. So that's when I'd basically lost my arm, then I, I was cleaning the machine out. Unaware that the rotors were still slowing down, the machine was actually turned off. So I was a bit unaware, as there was a noise of other machines running around me. And as I cleared the rest of the blockage out, you know, I don't need to say any more. During the mo momentum of everything, I remember being pulled in. Unfortunately for, for a panel that were there, it actually stopped me from going right into the machine. Basically, it stopped me by my elbow there. Um, and I remember like in a day thinking, oh, you know, something serious had gone wrong. I can remember getting to the hospital, but I don't remember any traveling time as such like that, because I, I think I just passed out. The consultant who was sort of taking care of me, doing the x-rays, they came to me and said, right, you've got a 65% chance if we saw your arm back on, that you'll keep it. And I said, unfortunately, it's not good enough for me. The percentages were too far out, and I, I, that decision there and then was like, well, I'm here now, I have no arm, I've got to make the most of what I've got. They wouldn't actually fit me a prosthetic arm for six months. So I'd done six months just learning to live without it. Then all of a sudden I've got this, what I would call an extension now. And it took me a good 12 months to get used to it. But now I've got used to it. Some of the attachments that they sent, to be honest with you, they couldn't keep up with the workload that I actually gave and I ended up breaking most of them within the first eight months. Me being me, I attempted to make some of my own tools. My favourite one is the hook because it's easy to use and it's there all the time. Uh, such as like, I've made my own players and, and socket extension bars and things for holding nuts and bolts when I'm tightening them up. But in other ways I've struggled quite a lot. Mentally wise and physically wise. Owning my own mechanic in business, everything suddenly went three times longer. And having to learn from the start, even including handwriting, was a big issue. And I've never actually fully managed to write properly since. The other side of it was with people, it's going out into public, people looking at you, that's that's the biggest problem. You know, for the first six months it was people coming up to me saying, oh, you're that idiot who lost that machine. I'm in a machine, you know, I'm like, I'm trying to come to terms with it, you know. Because I'm such a physical working lad, my work expectancy has dropped by about 15 years, I would say. Luckily for me, I have another friend who's a contractor, and they gave me a job in sort of December, ish somewhere around there uh, just just to uh, get myself back in the mainstream again but for the first sort of six or eight weeks I will not let anybody near that machine bar me because I dread to think that anybody else will go through the same life-changing experience that I've had to go through it sounds daft but you know be aware because they are dangerous basically such as young lads is always 16 to 21 22 year old right eager always wanted to jump in feet first what I would call now in terms of isolation is basically um, you stop the cutter heads, completely switch them off, turn the, turn the engine off on the machine, take the keys out so nobody can get in and start the machine up while you're in there. Uh, basically, you need to wait for at least two minutes to just identify that the machine has actually slowed down and stopped turning before you actually start removing any panels.